All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon are both down there if anybody wants to support me, only do so if you actually can. So it's time for the monthly U.S. drought situation update. And there has been a bit of improvement in a few places. There have been a few episodes of rain in the southwest scattered around. It was enough to pause Phoenix, Arizona's water supply decline for a little bit. The city of Phoenix, where most of Arizona's population lives, is supplied by a number of different surrounding reservoirs, which are measured across the system on a total collective percent full. And this year so far, since the decline started in April, and then sped up as it usually does in June, from about 72% full collectively down to 63 And for the last couple weeks, they have been getting off and on rain that did stall the decline and actually boost them back up to 64 for a few days. However, they have since declined back down to 63%, as well as the rain over the past month or so being enough to let Lake Mead regain about 6 inches of water level. Lake Mead and Lake Powell both being large reservoirs located along the Colorado River, both storage reservoirs, the purpose of which is to release extra water along the river whenever the flow of the river would not otherwise be adequate to meet the supply demands downstream, which has basically become all the time since uh, we rolled into the 21st century or so. So most years, Lake Mead and Lake Powell have lost more water level than they regained, as most lakes and rivers do have seasonal cycles throughout the year. Based on what time more rainfall occurs, when snow melts down from mountains, and Lake Mead has reached the usual time frame of the year now where its water level tends to level off. And the water level of the U.S. lake systems is measured in elevation feet. It's not the depth of the lake, it is the number you see is the height of the water level above sea level. So again, Lake Mead at present is not 1,041 feet deep. The surface of the water of Lake Mead is 1,041 feet above sea level. The actual bottom of Lake Mead would be around 890 or so, with the exception of right behind Hoover Dam. Lake Mead, if full, would be about 1225. It has not been there for a long time now. This year, having lost over 20 feet, dropping all the way down to 1,041 elevation feet, However, as I said, over this past month or so, the off and on bits of rain that the Southwest has gotten has been enough to let it regain about half a foot. And percentage-wise, in terms of how much actual volume is remaining in the lake, this year the drop went from about 34% of the water remaining down to now about 27%. So Mavi's basic math points to it only having about three to four years left. So as I've said before, that's falling in line with various other water level trends. The U.S. Southwest water situation is going to get particularly bad once we roll into the second half of the 2020s. That's when it's going to start hitting the point of triggering a massive U.S. internal migration issue. There's a link to the video covering that and some of the potential movement numbers. But even before reaching that point, we are going to run into other problems, or at least the Southwest is. The dams that hold back these reservoirs losing their ability to generate power, because in order to turn the turbines in the dam at a sufficient degree to generate large amounts of power, the water flowing through has to go through a decent enough gravity drop. So the actual intakes that lead to the turbines are not at the bottom of the lake, or at the bottom of the dam rather. They are some ways up, and for Lake Mead, the intakes are at around 950. And with Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which we'll jump to in a second, it's not just an issue for Las Vegas and the middle of nowhere in Utah. It's a water supply issue for quite a lot of places, including a huge chunk of it being for Southern California, as there is a large pipeline system, the Colorado River Aqueduct, which sucks water out of the Colorado River and pipes it over into Southern California. Now jumping to the second of those two large reservoirs, Lake Powell. Lake Powell had already gotten pretty close down to the intake levels of its own turbines. Its turbine intakes are at around 3490, and this year the water level dropped all the way down to 3522. During what was normally its refill season, it was able to build back up more than it otherwise would have. It built back up to 35.39 from a mixture of holding additional water back and releasing extra water from Lake Mead, 
as well as, as you can see from the sudden abrupt drop in Flaming Gorge's graph around that time, basically sacrificing Flaming Gorge. It has, however, passed that point of the year now. Since then, now dropping back down to 35.35. And if it goes at its normal rate, then it's probably going to be back down to that uh, 35.22 or a bit lower by the end of the year. And thus the next year, it will potentially get really close if not reach the actual turbine intakes. Now Lake Powell is at the bottom of Utah. Most of Lake Powell's water going off downstream. Utah has its own reservoir network with the dense concentration obviously being around Salt Lake City as that's where most of Utah's population lives. And Utah, similar to Phoenix, Arizona, has a collective percent full measurement system. And last year, Utah's water level dropped from 54% down to 39% collectively across its various reservoirs. It regained water level up to 46.5, so coming up 7.5% short. And now, already, it has dropped down to 40.7. And the state's collective decline phase usually lasts until October. So it's looking like Utah is going to go even lower this year, potentially down into the lower 30s. Now, over in California itself, California does have its own reservoirs inside the state, connected through various aqueduct systems to move the water around the state. The largest of California's reservoirs being Lake Shasta. Now, last year, Lake Shasta had a huge drop from 980 elevation feet all the way down to 880, and it did recover over its replenishment phase up to about 947. So coming 33 feet short or so. And it has not been one of the ones to actually take the most hits this year so far. As so far it has only declined down to 936. Representing a drop from between 39 and 40% down to 36.4% now. Lake Orville last year dropped from 730 down to 628. It eventually regained a lot of water level during that massive rain system that Northern California got towards the end of the year. And Lake Orville was actually able to go all the way back up to 777 or 776. Now it's been dropping kind of fast and is down to 720 elevation feet. Representing so far a drop from about 54% down to now just under 40. Lake Trinity Last year dropped from 2,280 elevation feet down to 2,210, only recovered up to 2,234, and was going slowly this year at first as well, however has started to speed up, and is now down just under 2,210 again, representing a drop from around or a bit above 30% down to 26.5. New Malone's Reservoir last year dropped from 1,010 elevation feet all the way down to 920, regained during its replenishment phase, only about 20 feet up to 940 and so far this year has now dropped all the way down to only 894 currently placing it less than 30 percent full coming in at 28.7 and the last of the big ones san louis reservoir last year had dropped down into the 300s this year had gotten back up to 454 however now is back down to 412 having dropped from over 50 percent full down to now 30.4 and down in the San Joaquin Valley in California, where some portion of the water is drawn from the San Joaquin River, the situation remains not that great. The amount of water flowing through the San Joaquin River is currently around 7 to 10 percent of its normal level. Its historic norm for this time of the year would be around 400 cubic feet per second, whereas it is currently between only 30 and 40. So some minor improvements for some locations in some aspects. I will pray earnestly for the people of the Southwest that some decent amount of rain does come. But anyways, that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Tons of videos, episodes you can listen to about all kinds of current or upcoming issues. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. And as always, go subscribe to my Catch channel for way less depressing content and help us get her up to a thousand subs before the deadline in November. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.